Hey guys, this is Chris Kovach from Toby Dynavox, um, Northeastern Regional Consultant in Florida. And today I'm going to quickly cover putting together and assembling a folding floor mount. I've had a couple questions of this come up in the past week or so, so I want to take a quick minute and just show you guys how to do it. So if I were to take the mount out of the bag that it comes in, these are the parts and pieces that you might see once everything's been uh, removed from its packaging. We're going to start with the actual base of the mounting system. So move some of this out of my way. The way to initially open this up is to simply find both wing nuts and loosen them all the way up until they stop moving. And you'll notice you gain a gap down here at the bottom. If you don't, like on this side over here, it hasn't given me the gap, just lift up a little bit and it'll pop into place. From here, all you do is swing the legs around to unfold the mounting system. You'll notice that it hits a stop at each location. What we're looking for is a big U-shaped, uh, stable base. Then you can tighten these wing, nut, wing nuts back up. Right there, we're good to go. Uh, if you need to make this base wider, you can remove one or both of these bolts completely, slide the tube to a wider location, line up some of the additional uh, holes that are within, and tighten the bolts back down to get you around uh, a recliner or under a bed if you need to make the base wider. Um, word of warning with that, the wider you make the base, the tougher it's going to be to get through some of the doorways in your home. So just kind of think that through as you're putting things together. You can always adjust it later, but something to think of early on. Next thing we need to assemble is this piece here. This is actually what is going to hold our vertical tube in place to the horizontal base. Again, thinking a little bit farther forward of where this is going to be used in the home is going to determine which one of these four mounting locations we're actually going to use. So most of the time, for uh, ease of use, I choose to mount to the center. But if you know specifically you're coming from one side of the bed or one side of the chair and you need the vertical tube to be offset farther, choose one of the endpoints. To attach this, you first need to remove the bolts that hold it together in the bottom. So loosen those up. Uh, and if you can't do that with your fingers initially, your kit should come with a little red handled five millimeter Allen wrench and then another standard five millimeter Allen wrench. Use either one of those to loosen this up. Take the bolts out, remove the bottom piece. And what you're gonna actually see in the bottom is a little pin right there. That pin is what is gonna fit into these mounting locations. So no matter which one you put it onto, it's gonna clip into place like that. Uh, once you've determined your location, go ahead and clip it into place. Take the bottom piece, and I normally start from the bottom, kind of hold it in place and just get it um, threaded in. One on each side. If you can get this as close to finger tight as possible, it's going to kind of keep it in place while you flip it over to do the final tightening. Now, instead of trying to fight with an Allen wrench and doing one turn at a, at a time here at the bottom, I normally just take the whole mount, flip it over, make sure I don't lose my pin like I just did there, line it back up, and now I can take either one of these tools and make sure I'm tightening this evenly on both sides. Now, you will notice there's always going to be a little bit of a gap here. The metal's not going to touch. Uh, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, it's the clamping force, as you can see I'm tightening this up, that actually keeps everything in place. Once those are snug, you can flip it back over. Now our base is pretty much complete. Now we're going to work on the vertical tubes and the horizontals. So I'm going to make sure that this lever here is loose. If this is all the way tight, you won't be able to actually slide the vertical tube in. So don't force it. If it doesn't go in easily, make sure that this is loose. You'll notice it just drops right in. Now I am going to leave this loose for the moment and I'll explain to you why in a little bit. Um, but it's going to allow us more flexibility as we're building the rest of the mount. Now, I took my mount all the way apart. You'll notice this piece here, there's nothing on it. It typically does not come this way, but if yours does, not to worry. All you have to do is locate these two pieces here. Slide them together and you're just going to start threading this in just a little bit. It's still supposed to spin at this point because we haven't inserted the tube and lock it into position. The next thing you want to do is locate this little bolt here. This is a safety uh, feature. 
If this is too tight, it will actually stop you from sliding a tube in. So even if this is loose and spinning, it feels like it should allow it in. This is a bolt that's going to be something you're gonna to need to loosen up. So we'll loosen that up just a little bit. Slide one of our tubes in, not loose enough. There we go. Uh, and you can take it in as far as you like. I'll tighten the black lever just to keep it in place. And now I can come back and you can either leave this loose now and tighten it up later or snug it up now just to be safe. What that does is allows you a little bit of a safety feature for if something were to happen with the device. If you were say to mistakenly loosen this lever and the device was on there, if the whole thing were to fall, that bolt keeps this tube from everything sliding out completely so the device doesn't fall and hit the floor. All right, so now what we can do is snug everything up there. You'll notice that my tube, my vertical tube here is still not tight. I haven't spun it or I haven't uh, tightened it so it'll still spin. Now what I wanna do is I want to find kind of the edges of the swing path for this arm. So I'm gonna loosen this lever back here, right at this ball joint at the head. And this is gonna allow me my rotation on the top mount. What I wanna do here is picture where my device is going to be after I've assembled everything, right? Uh, and what I wanna do is where that device is at, I wanna make sure that it's always over a stable base. So I don't want to have this tube installed where the device might be hanging out off the back of the mount. What's that's, what that is going to cause is a potential tip hazard. So I will find where my points would kind of max out. I'm still over top of my base there. I'm still over top of my base there. So with my swing, I'm gonna be somewhere within a stable frame. At that point, I'll come down here and I'll snug this up. You can always tweak it later, but this puts us in what we know is going to be a safe location. Uh, then I'm gonna take my two tube coupling with my lever. Make sure again that this is loose so I can slide the tubes on. I tend to match the levers to be on the same side. You can do it whatever way you want. If this works better for your situation or even down here up top, there's no wrong way to do it. Um, you just have to figure out your personal situation. Put your other tubes on. Slug the black levers up. Now I can take my device holder, loosen the back lever, which is gonna allow me to slide it onto the tube. So this will allow me to slide anywhere I need to go, rotate this way. And then this little black lever on the front is going to actually control the ball joint. So I can then make my fine tune adjustments and lock that into place when the device is on there. Uh, the last thing to cover, make sure all your, your joints are secure. Tighten everything back down before you put the device on it. All right, final thing, vertical adjustment. This is a hydraulic um, cylinder. So I do only recommend turning this a quarter to half a turn. You will get uh, the device to raise up and out. Be cautious if you're someone that might need a little bit of help putting this back down. It is fairly heavily sprung. So if you are um, going to possibly struggle with that, go with this very slowly so that it can kind of creep up when you need it to creep up. And then you can stop it with just a quick turn of the lever. If you loosen this up too much and it goes all the way up to the top, now you've got to bring it back down. You're going to have a really hard time doing that. Um, if you need you know, additional support or help, um, try not to let it get up this high. But to bring it back down, that's all you need to do. But that allows you the adjustments both vertically, horizontally, uh, with the bars and the, the ability to change any of these levers to any position that you could potentially need for your, your user. Uh, to put it in the right position for them. So I hope this helps guys and have a great day.